This clip is going to look at four examples for SATS papers for levels 5 to 7, but all of them are without the use of a calculator. This example is all about stacked crates, which can be stacked together. It says a stack of six of them has a height of 60 centimetres, a stack of five has a height of 55 centimetres. The first question asks, what is the height of a stack of three crates? Well, you can't simply half this. It doesn't work like that. Well, the difference between the two stacks is one crate and a difference in height of five centimetres. So the rim of one crate is worth five centimetres. Now here I have six crates. If each rim is worth five centimetres, five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, a total of 60 would mean that this base section is also worth 30 centimetres. So my question here, what is the height of a stack of three crates? Well, each rim, five, 10, 15 centimetres plus the 30 centimetres. Well, that gives me an overall height of 45 centimetres. Now the next part is actually easy because I've already done it. It says, what are the measurements of one crate? Well, I worked out that that was five centimetres for the rim and the height of this base section was 30 centimetres. And I got three marks for all of that. The final part of this question asks, a stack of crates has a height of 90 centimetres. How many crates are there in the stack? Well, it's important to remember that no matter how many crates are actually in the stack, the base section always equals 30. It's always the same, and it will be the case in here as well. So, if the total height is 90, and our base is always 30, that will leave a total of 60 centimetres for the number of rims that we can get in there, remembering that each rim was worth 5 centimetres. So, our answer is simply 60 divided by 5, which is equal to 12 crates. So that would be my answer there. Now, this question is actually worth three marks, which tells me that you don't actually have to get all of it right to get one or two marks, just as an added bonus. Now, the question says, draw arrows to match each calculation with its result. The first one is done for you. 75 multiplied by 24 is 1,800. Some of these look quite complicated. Pick the ones that you think you can do first. Well, the obvious one for me would be this. 75 divided by 24. Well, if it was 75 divided by 25, I know that would be three. So it's going to be three and a bit. And out of all of my answers, this is the only one that will give me that. So that one will go there. The next easiest one for me would actually be this one, 75 divided by 0.24. Well, this is actually nearly a quarter. So how many quarters would I get into that? Well, I could double it and double it again. So I'm going to get around about 300 and a bit more for my answer. And out of all of my possible solutions, 312 is my only one that's close. So that's going to go there. My next one, well, using again my knowledge of this, 0.24 is nearly a quarter. What's a quarter of 75? 0.24 times 75, what's a quarter of 75? Well, the only one that could be close to is 18. So that's that one. Nearly done. I'm going to take a bit of a guess at this one. 0.25 divided by 75, a small number divided by quite a large number, is going to be a really, really small number. And out of all of this lot, that's the only one. I only have one left, but let's just do a check. 24 divided by 0.75. I'm going to end up with a little bit more than I started with here, because I'm dividing by a number less than 1. 32, that seems reasonable. Hopefully I've got my three marks. This one's quite an easy one, and it's worth two marks. There are two answers, so obviously one for each of these. The question reads, each number in the sequence is minus two times the number before. Write the missing numbers. I'm gonna work backwards for both of these here. I'm gonna start with my 32, and that has to equal minus two times something. Now this is positive, so here I've got a negative number, it must be multiplied by another negative to give me a positive answer, and that is obviously going to be 16. So that's my first answer in there is minus 16. Repeating the process then for this one, start with my minus 16, I have to multiply it by minus 2. Now this time it will be a positive number, positive times a negative will give me a negative answer. So therefore that one's going to be 8, and that's going to fit in there. This question is actually quite a difficult topic of simultaneous equations, but it is actually only worth one mark. It says, Lena wants to solve this pair of simultaneous equations. 4t minus r is equal to 13, and 2t plus r is equal to 2. This is her working 
part of the working is covered. Which of these is the most likely to be the covered part of Lena's working? Put a ring around whichever one you think it is. Let's have a look at what we think she would have done. Well, to solve a pair of simultaneous equations, you either add or subtract one equation from the other to eliminate one of the unknowns. Well, here she's got 6t is equal to 15. So she has eliminated the r value in here. Let's just write our equations down. 4t minus r is equal to 13. Underneath that, 2t plus r is equal to 2. Now, she has ended up with 6t is equal to 15. So what has she done here? She added or subtracted? Well, to me, it's an addition. 4t plus 2t is equal to 6t. Minus r plus r will give me 0 here. 13 plus 2 is 15. So that is what she's done with her working. So let's find it on here. And it is, in fact, that one there. I hope that helps.